Yamuna Tira Bana Shah Yamuna Tira Bana Shah Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat
to, to take away the pride of Indra and anyone who develop pride by taking responsibility. And uh, it's wonderful to see that. And of course also to show that he always is there to protect his devotees, no matter how heavy the challenge is. Sometimes devotees we are scared to take challenges. Let's stay in the comfort zone, including myself. But I think it's a failure to do that. We lose to come out of the comfort zone and do what is required to preach Krishna consciousness. Especially preaching. Practicing Krishna consciousness is one thing, but preaching the prayer is real Krishna consciousness starts. Practicing that is for the neophyte. Try to get used to all these things and then we never give that up. But real Krishna consciousness starts when you start thinking on others, how to make others Krishna conscious. Then you you get really mercy. So I think also <clears throat> this is a lesson from the Bridge of Aspis we can learn. You know, just in any case, if Krishna says it, then it's okay. <laughs> we do it. So how it starts? So Nana Maharaj, he had uh, he he wanted to, after the harvesting uh, gives a Thanksgiving ceremony. Ex Thanksgiving. Today also we have Thanksgiving festival in the world, Thanksgiving. And that originally comes from thanking Lord for giving the harvest. And that is absolutely be, to be done. Even the Christians knew that very well. Every religion knows that if you want crops successful to grow and not fail this year, otherwise you will be hunger, then you have to do proper worship of the Lord. <clears throat> Whoever they understand to be the Lord, uh, whether they have more or less information about the real God. <clears throat> so, Nana Maharaj also wants to do that. And generally in Sanatana Dharma, Bhagavad Dharma, the more very popular is the demigod worship, even in previous yugas, although it's all finally given by Vishnu or Krishna. But uh, those who are uh, in this Vedic system, but they are still full of material desires, they cannot distinguish the difference between demigod worship and worship of the Supreme Lord. So they, they tend to be more easily attracted to demigod worship because that's, we get faster results and you don't have to do so much giving up of your false ego. Eh? But what is the result? The result is actually <coughs> Whatever the demigods give is temporary and it is very limited what they can give. Whatever Krishna gives, but you have to pay the price of full surrender, is permanent and unlimited. So you choose what you want. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but Nanda Maharaj, he, he seems also, he was there following that system of Karma Kanda. Um, the demigod worship was also part, although they are absolutely pure devotees of Krishna, no question of anything else. But uh, they follow also the other systems. See, it's an integrated system, the Vedic civilization. So Nana Maharaj told, okay, our friends, we're going to worship today Indra because he has given the rains again this year. And uh, we, we asked the Brahmanas to do that. And uh, they, are the, they are the ones who easily can pacify the demigods. The Brahmins are the best in the position to do that. And uh, we will start now <coughs> and uh, make all the paraphernalia ready. And, uh, and suddenly he says, Daddy, can I ask a question? <laughs> Krishna wants to ask a question, small boy. Everybody is so affectionate to Krishna. So, okay, what, what this boy wants to say now? <laughs> say, my father, why are you doing this? He says, uh, um, I, want to, I want to do this to please Indra. He said, but why, why we should do this, father? Eh? First, uh, Nanda Maharaj doesn't want to answer. He says, okay, keep playing Krishna. He said, no, 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 I want to know 
this really? You should explain me. And then of course, Nanda Maharaj, pure devotee of Krishna, when Krishna really wants something, then he melts the heart and he's just doing. When Krishna wants something, he's doing. That's the nature of the devotee. He doesn't start speculating, shall I do it or not. Just if Krishna wants it, we do it without second thought. So I say, uh, okay, we, we, have to, uh, we have to honor Indra. I say, honor. Krishna says, uh, why? I say, uh, he spoke a little bit this coming months of philosophy that if we just do our work eh, and if you work automatically things will grow, uh, everything will come on the way and like this. And uh, I say, yeah, yeah, that if you let's, it's not necessary to worship Indra. And then Indra held the trumpet, huh? what is going on here, what is this boy talking? And although he knew that the Lord knew about the Supreme Lord, that by his pride mixed with his devotion, he could not sharply recognize uh, that actually Krishna was really the Supreme Lord. Uh, so he got shocked to say, what is this is by talking and they're all listening with so much attention to Krishna. What is this? <laughs> then uh, Again, uh, Nanda Maharaj says, no, no, we have to do this. No, Father, we have already all this paraphernalia, and uh, let's just do that. Uh, actually, it is the land who's giving us, and it's the cows who are supplying us. So let's worship them. That is the first thing that we should do. And uh, yeah, we will do that later in another sacrifice. No, Father, we, let's do that now, the paraphernalia. Is there. Say, okay, we do that then. So they were uh, uh, really uh, focusing on uh, worshipping the land and the cow. Of course, this land is also, it has a deep meaning that uh, it is here in this place, is Girigogodam. So it is non different of Krishna. So it's actually worshipping Krishna. Or you say Vrindavan is non different of Krishna. That is an amazing. Thing. Uh, so personal. The whole land of Vrindavan is non different of Krishna. Due to the absolute pure devotion, everything becomes so transcendental, so personalized. So, by worshipping Giri Govindam, is also worshipping Krishna. He wants to show that. And then, of course, worshipping the cows. Eh? If you, and there is no, you cannot separate cows from Krishna. He's always there with the cows, that's why his name is Govinda, 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 Govinda. That's why Go for that. Right? The cows graze. So, that was good. Krishna liked it, and if Krishna likes it, everything is perfect. Although it looks like a small guy, not so much significant position, but that's enough for the devotees. So they were very happy doing that. They prepare so many preparations of the grains and chapatis and puris and so many sweets, so many milk products. Eh? Milk products. Sometimes now in our in our Iskam, today there is a tendency to give up milk products because it comes from the slaughterhouse. And uh, there is, is a big tendency because but we should stick to what Prabhupada said. Prabhupada, that time in Prabhupada's time, also slaughterhouses are there, equally cruel, now which a little bit more cruel, I don't know, but cruel and enough, cruel enough during Prabhupada's time. And Prabhupada, they was asked, better we don't use milk from the cows who were slaughtered, we are supporting that cow slaughter. But Prabhupada said, no, we use it. Now there can be so many logical reasons why that is wrong. But we don't care. When Prabhupada said, use it, we use it, even if it's against all mundane logic. He said, because milk is so important. Of course, you take milk, ecological milk. That can be a clear choice. Of course, because so much garbage they put afterwards in, you get maybe more sick than you get healthier. I don't know. But then take ecological milk. And uh, because 
it makes sense if you use this milk despite the slaughter. It gets enormously purified and that will cause the stop of the slaughterhouse at one point. And also Prabhupada said without milk the spiritual brain will not develop. And brahmanas who speak the truth and milk constitutes perfect human society. If the milk disappears and brahmanas don't speak the truth anymore or they're hiding the truth or they keep it to the inside, then everything collapses, even within this country. We have to speak truth on all levels. We don't have to choose one truth, we try to speak the truth, and another truth we don't like to speak. No, a Brahman doesn't care, even if he chop his head. He's his own head will be chopped. He's, he's more dedicated to the truth than fear of chopping his own head. That is a real Brahman. So, this milk product is full of it. And Prabhupada said, any preparation, milk makes any preparation perfect. And without milk you cannot really get full thing. Anyway, that was all there. And um, they had a wonderful feast. Huh? Then uh, to emphasize that this kind of uh, way of worshipping Govardhan is very important to do, he told. So Uh, one who neglects the worship of Govardhan Puja, as I am personally conducting it, will not be happy. So all those who are not here today, bad luck. <laughs> you cannot be happy, it seems. <laughs> or oh, they forget to, to do the worship of Govardhan. Uh, it's also a representation of Buddha. Govardhan is also... It, I mean, uh, it represents so many things. Uh, why Prabhupada is so adamant on this uh, Krishna? We can see it in the context of today, it makes sense. It represents Buddhavi, it represents Vanashan Dharma, it represents cow protection, it represents pure bhakti. And uh, I can imagine in the future this becomes the main festival to promote Daivi Vanashan Dharma. This becomes the main festival to inspire people towards simple living high thinking. This becomes the main festival to make a law on color protection. This festival. Just who had thought that Jinmasthami will become a big festival? Now it's, I think, almost the biggest festival in India. You know, Krishna Jinmasthami in Bombay, 500,000 people come. In, in Bangalore also, in New Delhi, 500,000. Five kilometers around, the whole police of Bombay is utilized to manage the traffic. You can imagine the, the powerful influence. So the same with Damodarastika is happening also. It becomes a wave. Um, in Malaysia, even outside of India, they, they do on so many streets, uh, parts, they put a, a murti of, a plastic murti of Madhurya Sarva and baby Krishna. And which person doesn't like a mother and a baby? Which Muslim or Christian doesn't like a mother and a baby? And then you tell to the people who come along, you offer some lamb, you sing a nice song, and you get something sweet to eat. Who will say no? So in Malaysia they make a program and they, they, they every time they on the street, hundreds of thousands of people. So one day we can do the openings. Which Danish person doesn't like a mother and a, and, and a baby? Huh? They're also human beings. I think so. I hope so. <laughs> Still some sentiments left for normal life. I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, totally gone. Case. If that is not possible, if they cannot be attracted to a mother and a child, there is no hope from Denmark. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it is very significant festival, and it should be, that's why in Vrindavan also, it's, it's an enormous festival. They spent, maybe, I don't know, almost crore for Govardhan Puja. You can, Prabhupada said you can spend any amount of money to worship Krishna and you get it back, don't worry. Hmm. So, what, what Krishna says again? 
One who neglects the worship of God and puts it as I am personally conducting it will not be happy. There are many snakes on Govardhan Hill and persons neglecting the prescribed duty of Govardhan Puja will be bitten by these snakes and killed. What does that mean? <laughs> you know, you will get bites up oh, and maybe you, you die spiritually. That's a strong statement, right? In order to assure the good fortune of the cows and themselves, all the people of Vrindavan near Govardhan must worship the hill as prescribed by me. Right? So, yeah. Krishna took over the authority. That small boy took over the authority of the big, big guys. So, Indra was not happy. He says, my God, you became so upset like anything. So, he, he called his clouds because we know he is in charge of the rain and the rains means clouds. And there are special clouds called Sambhattaka clouds. And they are only asked for the, when there is the, the pralaya of the universe, the, the distracting clouds. That means enormous much rain, so much you can fill up half of the universe with that water. So you can imagine such clouds. He said in the, in the time of uh, destruction, uh, for I think, yeah, 100 years it rains. Now, first 100 years it is 50 times hotter than during the summertime. It becomes like 2500 degrees. So no physical body can exist, everything burned up. And then to balance the heavy again pulling it out with the water for 100 years. Practical management, I think, yeah, makes sense. So, oops, and everything is cooled down and settled again. All the nonsense stopped for some time. So, these cows, Sambhattaka, were called to, to crush the pride of Krishna and all these Krishna Bhaktas. What is this nonsense? They are too pride. Huh? Only, you know, so much faith in Krishna, that small boy. I will teach them who is the real God here. Huh? So, he came there with the cloud. Oh my God, it became raining and all this. The British of Asis, oh, what's happening? Hey, our, our houses are lost, our, our, so much heavy rain. There were pillars like this rain almost, it seems. And crushing the houses and the cows, they got massaged like anything by, by that water. And uh, my God, so much destruction and, and it's flooding here and there and becoming like rivers and the, the children are, are helpless. So what to do now? What to do? Krishna! Krishna! They, they, they don't say Mama or Papa. They say Krishna. That is Bridge of it's, it's so so much thinking on Krishna. Always. So much giving the life to Krishna. So if they're in danger, they can only say one thing, Krishna. Not Mama, not Papa, or oh my God, or my health, or my stomach. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Krishna said, don't worry, don't worry. Oops, immediately Krishna is always alert to protect his devotees. Oh, my devotee is in danger? I'm going to help him. And, oops, and how he's doing it? He took that Govardhan heavy hill. Uh, what you see now, the Govardhan is much less. He said, every, every year it goes one centimeter. Yeah? So it was uh, seven miles that time, very huge mountain, like in the ice almost, and very wide. And Krishna just took it up, not with two hands, like Hercules or Atlas, taking the earth on his black, and that is God with a long beard because God is very old. No, 